The Poetry Center bringing poetry to Patterson since 1980 at Passaic County Community College. In second grade, in second grade, our teacher, Miss Elmer, never smiled. Her mouth shut straight as a staple. Her eyes, pale blue, hated us all. Rows of seven-year-olds lined up in front of her at her wooden desks with names of earlier children carved, carved in them and hearts and arrows with Billy and Carol, Paul and Lucille gouged out inside. Miss Elmer wore her sensible shoes and rayon dresses stamped with sprigs of flowers. The dresses had white collars, stiff and starch. She wore a brooch pinned at the collar, her hair in tight, mousy brown curls on her head. I sat in the front row near the window, skinny Herman Westfall, the only Dutch boy in our class, with his silky blonde hair and his thin, milk-white face, sat next to me. Miss Elmer didn't like any of us, but she particularly hated Herman Westfall. Herman waggled and squirmed. He couldn't sit still. She'd march over to us, her heels clacking on the tiles. Hold out your hand, she'd yell at Herman, and his pale, thin bone hand would tremble out toward her. And she'd lift her ruler in the air, and whoosh, the ro ruler would smack down hard on Herman's hand. Again, she'd say, and I'd cringe and cower, feeling every blow as though it had landed on my hand. The room so still, no one dared to breathe. So still, we could hear, as if it were an airplane, the ruler moving through the chalky air. I was thinking about distances. I was thinking about distances driving through the Catskills down miles of highway that made me realize the older we get, the more alone we are. So many things I can't say to you. So many thoughts to hide in the pockets of my heart. Remember when we went camping in the mountains that's out outside Taos? We were so young, driving up the side of those steep mountains. When we reached the top, the muscles in your arms straining against the pull of the wheel, afraid that the VW bus couldn't make it to the top, cursing at it because you were worried the VW would roll backwards down the mountain. Finally, at the crest of the road, we passed into a grove of birch trees, as though New England had appeared above the red sand and desert landscape of New Mexico. The knots in my clenched hands loosened, and I could breathe again. Later, under a sky crammed with stars, we sat near the campfire after the children fell asleep in the tent. I can still smell the baby powder and shampoo of their skin and hair. The air grew cold as the sun went down. Remember how we wrapped up together in a blanket near the fire? How you were the best friend I had ever had? How I would tell you anything? I was happy just to sit next to you, your arm around me, my shoulder touching your shoulder, my arm, your arm. How lucky we were in our mid-twenties, just out of grad school, our interest in books and theater and art and movies, meshing like the fingers of our hands. And today, so much to hide. Jacob's Department Store when I was growing up, we'd go to Jacob's Department Store in Patterson, New Jersey. My, bro my mother, brother, sister, and I made our way to the shoe department to get our shoes. They carried brown Oxfords, Buster Brown, the only name brand item my mother ever bought for us. No ballerina shoes for us, only those chunky Oxfords trying to ensure our feet would be as safe as she tried to keep us. In the shoe department, they had a machine that x-rayed your feet so they could fit you with the perfect size shoes. 
I love that machine, sliding my feet into it so I could see the bones in my feet, the shape of them like silver shadows. How easy it was to the, see the interior of the foot, the bones of the toes. But today, nothing is easy. I'd like to slide my life into that foot measuring machine, figuring out why, on a day so bright with autumn, my worry is darker than all beauty and nothing is easy. Not the email I get from my son in Texas saying, I don't want to talk about it, but Texas stinks. And I know my son, a man of few words, has sent out a distress call louder than a sonic boom. And if I ask him, he won't tell me what's wrong. Though he used to tell me everything when he was still a boy and I sat on the side of his bed and held his hand until he fell asleep. And nothing is easy, not my worry about my husband whom I left behind yesterday, even though his head is bent sideways on his neck so it looks as though he's going to hit all doorways and walls and often does. Not my guilt that when I went to bed the other night, I heard him cursing and shouting, and I heard the aide who lives with us now, because he can't be left alone, go downstairs, and I fell asleep anyway. And my guilt when the aide tells me the next morning that he was trying to get to the bathroom and fell and wet his pants as she had to calm him down and change his clothes and wash him, the way I did so many times before she moved in. And I am ashamed that I have hired someone else to do what I can't manage anymore. I don't need that foot machine to see how devastated and broken the lines of my life have become. And no shoes, no shoes to think, fix what is wrong.